Hey everybody, welcome back to class. Uh, this is going to be our first official class. Last class we kind of did just a little bit of introduction to algebra, talked a little bit about how you can be successful in the class. This is our first class where we're actually going to get into some math and start talking about um, the algebra itself. So, uh, welcome. And uh, I also wanted to tell you, um, I just kind of looked into some copyright laws and things like that, and I found that um, I'm not going to be able to share the book with you on a screen share. Um, so what I will do is I will reference different p parts of the book, um, and then you can uh, obviously have your books there with you looking at them. If you don't have a book, then you need to buy a book. I think everybody uh, that's in my class um, should have their books. Um, but if you don't, make sure to get a book and so you can keep up with me. But I will be referencing page numbers and things like that. But here on the board, I'll just be doing some problems and I'll be talking to you and uh, showing you some stuff um, like that. So um, let's go ahead and get started today. Um, if you do have your book, we are on page number two. The Introduction to Algebra, Introduction to Algebra, and like I said, this is kind of going to get a little bit more into the mathematics. Last class was an introduction to the class itself. This is an introduction to the mathematics and to the terminology, uh, the words that we'll be using, things like that. All right, so Introduction to Algebra. Um, one thing in algebra that's a little different than it was in arithmetic is in arithmetic, we used to write... Uh, two, um, two times five. I'll get it right there. There we go. Two times five. All right. Now we can't do that anymore. Uh, in other words, we can't use that right there. We can't use that X. Okay. So this is not going to work anymore. There's a reason it's not going to work anymore because in algebra we use letters. And one of the most common letters that we actually use is the letter X. So we can't use the letter X, all right? So um, we have to write something like two, and then we're gonna use like a dot, like a raised dot, five. Two times five, that means times. Um, now make sure that you don't write it like this. Don't write your dot down there. That's 2.5, okay? That's a different thing altogether. So that doesn't work. The, the, the dot has to be raised up off of the line just a little bit, okay? And then the other way that we could do this is we could write two parentheses five. That would work. We could even write the two in parentheses. That's fine. Or we could even write both of them in parentheses. That is also fine. Um, and like I said, the reason we do that is because now we're going to be using this X. Instead of using it as a time sign, we're going to use it as what's called a variable. We'll talk about variables in just a second. But... Um, another way to do this is with a letter. So let's say that we have 2x. 2 times x. You wouldn't be able to put 2xx. X. That's not going to work. Okay. So instead of that, we had to put 2 times x. Well, another way that we could do that is just writing 2 parentheses x. We talked about that. We could write the 2 in parentheses. We could write them both in parentheses. The third way that you can do it is you can write it 2x with nothing there, okay? No sign whatsoever. If we don't write a sign, what does it mean? It means multiply. Anytime you see two, two, a number and a letter or something side by side or two letters side by side, it means multiply, okay, if there's no sign. Um, and so I think that you've seen that before probably in pre-algebra, but I just wanted to go back over it. Um, Obviously, we can't write this one right next to each other because that's going to look like 25. No, we can't do that. So if you ever have two numbers next to each other, you have to write a dot or a parenthesis either way. Okay? Um, and if you have a number and a letter or even two, no two letters, you could have X and Y, and you could write it like that. That would be fine. Okay? All right, so let's kind of go on here. The next little section that we come to is talking about algebraic expressions. Algebraic expressions. All right, I'm just going to tell you something right now. I'm not an English teacher. I don't have good handwriting. It's okay. Most of you can probably read what I'm writing, but it's not great. So I'm not your English teacher. 
and uh, I'm definitely not a spelling teacher. So you're going to see me spell things wrong all year long. Um, you know, just move on with life. Just keep going. It's fine. All right. Mr. Steve spelled something wrong again. Yes, I know. So algebraic expressions. I try, but I just, I'm not very good at spelling. So here's what an algebraic expression is. An algebraic expression is when you have two things kind of put together in multiplying or dividing. So what we were talking about earlier, uh, 2x, that's an algebraic expression, okay? Um, I'll show you some with division. If we had 2 divided by x, that's an algebraic expression. The only thing is we don't really do that anymore, okay? That's more like elementary, I call it baby math, okay? That's baby math stuff. All right, so we, won't, we don't want to do baby math anymore. So we're big, you know, we're in ninth grade, okay? We're freshmen. So we're doing um, big kid math, okay? So big kid math, what we do is instead of two divided by with a divided by sign, or we definitely don't do this. We don't do two, whoops, sorry. We don't do two divided by x. No, no, okay, we don't do that. So here's what we do. We do it, we write it like a fraction. Two divided by x. This right here means fraction and it means divided by. Fractions are division problems, okay? If you didn't know that, now you do. Fractions are division problems. That's what they are, fractions. Uh, fraction bar means division. So this is the way we're gonna write it now. This is an expression, this is an expression. Okay, they're both expressions. Algebraic expressions. Um, you could also have, um, you know, plus, minus, all kinds of different things. Basically, um, operations, arithmetic, plus, minus, divide, multiply. Those are expressions, okay, algebraic expressions. And a lot of times an algebraic expression is going to have an X in it, a Y in it, an A, B, or a C in it, some sort of a letter in it. Okay, um, let's go ahead and move on to the next section. I know I said I'm going to try to keep these to seven minutes, but it's going to be hard trying to get through all this information. So I'm going as fast as I can. These are probably going to end up being a little bit longer, but as we go on, I'll try to shorten them as the best as I can. So uh, we'll work together on that. The next thing that the book talks about is a numeric. I don't want to even write that yet. I just want to write the word coefficient. Coefficient. What is a coefficient? A coefficient is something that comes in front of or before something else, okay? So like if I have three x, the three is a coefficient because it comes before the x. So that's a coefficient. So that would be the coefficient there, okay? This is called a variable. That's called a variable. What's a variable? Well, it varies. It changes. If something varies, it changes. And so we don't know what x equals. And this is what you're going to find out in algebra the farther we go. We don't know what x equals. That's, what, that's the whole point of algebra. We're trying to figure out what does x equal. Okay. And so that's a, a variable, coefficient variable. This one specifically is what we call numeric. Numeric. Now, what does numeric mean? Numeric means a number. This is a number coefficient. Now look at this, what if I have um, AX? Well, A is a coefficient, but it's a special kind of coefficient. It's what we called a literal. It's a literal coefficient. A literal letter, okay, numeric number, Okay, so those are the two different time types of coefficients. Um, one thing that is good to note right here is if I have an x and I don't have anything in front of it, you might say then there's no coefficient. Yes, there is. There is a coefficient there. There is always an understood one in front of any letter. Any letter always has a one in front of it, uh, unless there's another number in front of it. Um, and why is that? Because it always represents one of something. Like, let's say that x equals um, a pen. x equals the pen. Well, how many pens do I have? If I just have one x, how many pens do I have? 
one pen. So I have one X or I have one pen, okay? What happens if I have two pens? Well, then I have two X, okay? Uh, and so that's, you can always think of it like that. So the X is representing something. And so it's always a one in front of it because I always have one pen. If it doesn't tell me how many I have, then I always have one. It's an understood thing. All right, a um, couple more words here. Um, variable I already went through. Um, oh, this is interesting. If I, if I have a plus one Y, for example, okay? Or I could have a minus one Y. So I could have a positive coefficient or I can have a negative coefficient. What is the coefficient if it's just one Y? That's right, it's always positive, okay? So the positive is understood. They don't always write the positive, but if there's no, if there's no plus or minus sign, then it's always going to be a, a positive. If, there, if there's a negative, then it's obviously negative. All right, the next uh, word that's there is the word term. And the word term means how many um, of these things are there, how many expressions, uh, quantities, whatever. All right, so if I have three X, that's one term. Two terms looks like this. Sorry. Two terms looks like this. Three X plus five, for example. Three X plus five, that's two terms. You could also have three terms. And so that would look like this, 3x plus 5 minus y. 3x plus 5 minus y, there's three terms. Notice what is separating terms, plus signs and minus signs. Multiply and divide do not separate terms. The only thing that separates terms is plus and minus signs. And so one student told me one time, they said, Mr. Steve, check this out. All I need to do is count my plus and minus signs and add one. That tells me how many terms I have. So look at this. So I count one plus and minus sign, add one, that's two terms. How about this one? One, two, add one, three terms. So that student was using their head there. They thought of a different way to do it. So however, however you look at that is fine, but just re realize that plus and minus signs divide terms. Multiply and divide signs do not divide terms. All right, the old, I think one of the last words that we have to look at is the word factors. And here's what factors are. And we know this from, from uh, baby math, from elementary school. Three times two equals six. Well, these are called factors. Okay? Remember, this would be called a product, okay? So factors and product, sorry about that, product, okay? Well, in algebra, if we have three times x, we have, these are factors, because this is three times two, those are factors. Well, now we have three times x, those are factors. And so we have factors, and we'll talk a lot more about factors as we go through this. Um, the last thing that this chapter talks about is exponents. Okay, and with an exponent, you always have like a, it's called a base. All right, so that's the exponent. And this is the base. So x with a 2. The x is the base. You could also write it like this. 2 to the x. So now the 2 is the base. We switched it. And the exponent is now x. So letters can be exponents or letters can be bases. But the big number, the main number, that's, uh, that's the base. And then the little number that we put up top, that is called the exponent. And I know I'm going over things that you already know, but I want to just review those. If you will, go ahead and look in your book on page number four. You'll see a little chart there. It talks about what do we call it. Let's say we have three with a little two. We call that squared.
when the exponent is 2, it's squared. 3 with a little 3, that's called cubed. And then with a little 4 and anything else, we always say 2 the 4th power. 2, 3 to the 4th power is how we'd say that. And that's all written there in your book. You can look at table A. Anytime you see in your book you see a table, very important. You're going to see that again on quizzes, tests, all kinds of different things like that. So uh, make sure you look at table A there to get a little bit more information about the qu squared, cubed, and then to the fourth, to the fifth, whatever it is uh, from there. Okay? All right. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.